Hey guys, my name is Sevagami, Sev for sure, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So, are you as excited as I am by reading the title of this video? Okay, I need to calm down already. So today I'll be talking about the Midnight Sun. So the Midnight Sun is the same story as Twilight, but it's written from the point of view of Edward. So I'm sure you wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't know what Twilight was about. However, I will give you a quick overview. So it basically focuses on a teenager called Bella who attends a new school. And there she meets a boy called Edward who she finds really intriguing and she knows there's something up with them, but she's not sure what is going on with them and eventually they fall madly in love and she basically finds out that he's a vampire and it's not that simple there's obviously more to it it's very complicated and you basically get dragged into this whole different world midnight sun has been in the making for 12 years she wrote it around i think 2008 however someone in the publishing team leaked it and loads of people got hold of um they got hold of the story on a pdf file on the internet it was so easy to find it and would you believe it if i said that i didn't read it like i swear i actually didn't read it no, I swear, I swear I didn't read the PDF file. And I thought she was going to release it a lot sooner. So for her to release it 12 years later, you can imagine how excited I am by this book. I finished the book in three days, honestly. Like, my friends were like, Siv, do you want to come out? Uh, no. Nah. So of course, I can't go any further without first saying whose team I'm on, team Edward or team Jacob. And if you know me, then you know I'm team Edward. Um, I think even if you're Team Jacob, you still have read this book. So I actually have no idea why Stephanie Meyer chose a pomegranate as the cover page for her book Midnight Sun. However, I did go on the internet to find out and I'm going to tell you straight away. So the reason for the pomegranate is based on this Greek mythology where uh, this god called Hades falls in love with Persephone and he kidnaps her. Hate tricks Persephone into eating six pomegranate seeds and now that she's eaten food from the underworld she must spend half of the year there and one month for each pomegranate seed that she's eaten. Also one of the other theories for the book which I really liked is the inside look at the pomegranate as opposed to seeing the outside of fruit can represent how we are getting an inside look into Edward's thoughts and feelings. Since Midnight Sun is written from Edward's point of view then that makes sense. You see the inside of the fruit because you get to see it from his point of view. Um, apparently pomegranate in Latin means apple with seeds and Twilight, the cover picture for Twilight was an apple. But here we get like a different variation of Twilight. So let me start off with the sweet message that Stephanie's May Stephanie Mayer has written at the front of the book. It's so sweet and personal. And even at the end, back of the book, she basically thanks like loads of people. And she also then like makes a special dedication to her readers and she writes please write your name on the line below and give yourself a high five and she's even like a whole line for it however i will not be writing my name in this book because i spotted two spelling mistakes one of them was on page um i think it was on page 20 where instead of saying very it says very and then on page 21 instead of saying is there a problem it says it's there a problem and recently i found out that one of the Harry Potter books went out at auction for like I think ninety six thousand dollars because there was um in the list of things that Harry has to take with him to Hogwarts School, uh, one of the items is repeated twice and then there's also a spelling mistake in the book. You never know this book might be worth you know a little bit more, a little bit less in like twenty years time. But I'd be really interested to interested to find out if you've got the same spelling mistakes in your book. Okay, so I don't even know where to start with this book. So let me start off with um, the first chapter. So when Edward's sat in the canteen, he's really bored and he's thinking, oh my God, another day of school. Because obviously he's like 90 years old. I think he's 70 years old or no. I can't remember how, how old he is. But he's really old. So obviously school is like super boring for him. And then he basically gets sight, he gets the sight of Bella. And like when you read that book it honestly takes you all the way back it just reminds you of like the twilight days because i feel like that is an iconic scene isn't it when like bella walks in the canteen and she looks at them and she looks at his family and they're all set there like really stiff but like they all look strange but they're all really good looking at the same time so seeing that from edward's point of view is super interesting and initially i thought you know it was going to be love at first sight and edward was just going to and it was, he was just going to see Bella and he just thought, oh, like, she's the one. However, like, 
reading through reading this book you then find out that that's not the case at all initially he actually hates her which i thought was so strange because you i just genuinely didn't expect that for edward to hate bella what i enjoyed about this book is that a lot of these iconic moments you get to see them from edward's point of view so you get to see why he's like thought to wear at the moment so for example the biology class um the canteen for example when bella gets into the car accident or like at the end prom mm -hmm. the i think the chapter personally that did surprise me the most was when edward set was set in um bella's biology class and when she walked in um from bella's point of view you think that you know he thinks she stinks because he's like pulling a face and you kind of like you can tell that he starts to stop breathing and he's pulling away from her however in the book you then find out that actually her smile was so strong that he wanted to on the spot kill her in order to be able to like drink her blood he goes into complex plan of like how he can kill everyone in the class so that he can basically kill her so he thinks of if he starts on the back then you know the people at the front have time to kill to scream so then he's thinking right maybe i should start from the front and like kill them one by one you do get the impression or you do know that edward thinks of him as a monster um in this book is pretty much throughout the whole book is the stores get repetitive and he's constantly you know saying how much of a monster he is how he doesn't deserve bella some people would say that this book is boring or they would say it's too repetitive but actually it's not there's no problem with the book it's more edward's mindset so it's the fact that he is um he thinks of himself so badly and he just always views himself as his monster and because that's so repetitive in the book I think some people have not necessarily liked the book because of that however I do agree that eventually it does kind of get long you're like oh my god please like we get the point Edward you're not made for Bella and you're like this bad person we get it but you know you're still attractive so she's still gonna go for you so in the book you then obviously find out that Edward um, kind of becomes a stalker he gets obsessed with Bella um, before they even start talking properly and he basically when she goes to sleep at night time he sits in her bedroom watching over her like making sure nothing happens to her and those parts of the book I thought were quite boring because there is many nights where he goes and sleeps over no, well he doesn't sleep over there but he basically stands in a room and I think at those points um we could have gone back to his past life which at which at times in the book it does happen so we do get snippets of his past and like his siblings past as well but it would have been better to get more of it because instead of you know him seeing Bella and thinking oh she looks so beautiful or what is she thinking etc we could have gone more into his past life because it's very interesting he's been around for many years and those stories of the past that really pulled you into the story so you know him the like the first time he met Carly and um, how Rosalie met um, Emmett things like that however times where he was just watching her and like, analyzing like every single one of her expression were kind of boring like sometimes um because he can't read her mind then he basically goes into analyzing every single one of her movement like every single face expressions and like any like twitch in the face he just assumes one thing we could have had more um history outside of just Bella and Edward I think there could have been more story um regarding like Edward being at home like interacting with his siblings interacting with his parents which I don't think we got enough of I think what's really sweet about this book is kind of like you know when you meet like a couple and they're like really cute and you ask them oh now why is it that you love so much about the other person like in this book is what you get to see so you get to see why Edward was so in love with Bella and what he sees because when you read Twilight um she kind of comes across like a plain person she comes she comes across like you know there's nothing that special about her and that's because you're in her mindset so she's quite a humble and she doesn't think highly of herself you know she just thinks you know she's just like a normal girl so then to read it from his point of view you get to see like exactly what he likes about her so from the point on which i started really enjoying the book and i felt like this is what you know i was looking forward to was from mind over meta so this is the part when Edward and Bella they've gone over all these like awkwardness between them Bella is being able to ask loads of questions so from there onwards I think it becomes a lot more there's a lot more to the story it's not just about Bella and Edward anymore it's more about um how they can move forward and like what the 
like Edward's family's thoughts are on it. In the book, what I was really surprised was um, like Edward, how he saw himself on top of the food chain. So he obviously calls himself as a vegetarian because he only drinks uh, animals' blood. However, I was really surprised to see how similar they were to animals. When you read like Twilight, you don't realize how dangerous Edward and his family are because you kind of see them as human when in fact they're very much similar to animals. Their natural instinct is stuff to act like an animal. So whenever they see blood, they've got like venom flowing in their mouth. There is some sort of conflict with like even other vampires. They start hissing at them and they sort of gain to like, they start crouching to get like into like fighting mode. So I thought that was super interesting. One of the other facts that I liked was how um, Edward basically makes sense of the fact that the reasons they are so good looking and so beautiful and they attract humans is because how you attract your prey, right? So you know how in the animal kingdom, some animals, um, some males, for example, they show off um, their feathers so that they attract females. Similar to that, the vampires, one of the reasons why they're so good looking is so that they can attract their prey, which I would have never guessed that's one of the reasons why they are like meant to be so good looking and attractive. So my favourite chapter in the book must be chapter 13, which is, I think it's called Another Complication. And basically around this chapter is when Bella um, goes off uh, to meet the killer and she tries to, um, she basically escapes Alice and Jasper's supervision in order to save her mum and she also thinks that she's going to save Edward by doing so. So those are the only chapters where you really didn't know what Edward was doing because in those chapters Bella was pretty much by herself. But those chapters are super good and also why I enjoyed it so much is because honestly it was it honestly felt like it was coming out fast and furious. Edward and his siblings they like all get into a car and they basically have to like they're trying to go as fast as they can to the studio but at the same time they don't want to set off the police after them so they basically drive like super fast and they have to go around corners and then they have to like change cars and there's so much action into it like the most there was in the whole book so those chapters were good because it was different to like to the rest of the book if so one thing i like to mention in this book is jasper so i think he's such a underrated character which really surprises you in this book and I think Stephanie Mayer did on purpose to kind of focus on him. In Edward's family most of them have some sort of superpowers so even if they don't have a superpower they've got like like an amazing quality to them so you know like Carla you really like him because he's super compassionate, Esme is like super loving, uh, Alice she gets to see the future, uh, Rosalie is like meant to be really beautiful uh, more than the like ordinary vampire Emmet is like super strong and Edward obviously he can read mind and then yes Jasper so Jasper is like I don't know if it's Jasper or Jasper I feel like Jasper comes like more easily it's probably Jasper isn't it I don't know but anyways Jasper so he's able to control mood so for example if there's a conflict he's able to like bring the tension down However, in this book, he really comes through with that power. He does something that you genuinely wouldn't expect him to be able to do it. And even Edward is surprised by it. So I really like that about Jasper in this book. However, there's something that does happen with him, which to me doesn't make sense. In Newman, um, Bella basically gets a paper cut and there's like a bit of blood coming out. And Jasper, after whole family, is the one that struggles the most with um, withholding like um, drinking human blood. And when, uh, when he's sees like when he smells the um the blood coming out of the paper cut he basically goes like mental and he launches for Bella and Edward stops him however in this book in the Midnight Sun one thing that doesn't make sense is when Edward is saving Bella and she's got like all this blood around her she's basically dying and whilst this is happening um Jasper is still in the same room and he fights off the other vampire alongside Emmet managed to like um, we told himself but when in Newman when there's a little blood coming out of a finger um, he basically goes mental. I think that kind of was like a discrepancy in the book. Also one thing that is interesting is that um, part, of the, part of the reasons why he loves Bella is because of how human she is. So you know in the book he, he makes reference to her skin tone and um, how it's not like stone white and like her heart like the sound of her heart and you know other like features that obviously pinpoint to the fact that she's human so however in Breaking Dawn she then turns into a vampire which you know takes away all her human features and when Edward sees Bella as a vampire in, Ed in Alice's visions he shudders at the thought of it he can't stand the way she looks or how her skin is like white stone and he's kind of put off by this monster that Bella has turned to and he still loves her despite of that so 
obviously it would have been like good to see how he felt when he first saw her as a vampire because it must have been like such a surprise for him. So one of the things I was really surprised by by this book um, was uh, Edward's thoughts around prom time. So he already had made the decision to leave, which at no point in Twilight did I think he was going to do it, especially around that time because prom, um, when you read it in Twilight, it's so perfect. You like look so forward to the next book. Whereas here, reading Midnight Sun, you come to realize that he was already decided that at some point in the future he's going to leave Bella alone, that he's gonna disappear from her life. And he, one of the like one of the thoughts that goes through in his head um, at prom time, he thinks, oh, you know, she would tell her kids that prom wasn't half as bad. Like that honestly was so upsetting. And I think even when you read Midnight Sun you realize that Edward thinks he's doing the best for her by leaving her. I can't understand how he thought by leaving her he would be doing a favor. So that was an unexpected turn in the book. Like in the end I do prefer Twilight over Midnight Sun but I think there's many reasons for it. I think one of them being that when you read Twilight obviously you you don't know what the story is that everything is new whereas here you know eventually what's going to happen and you know what the ending to the story is so i think when you read twilight it's a lot more mysterious so this is the end of the book review i hope you've enjoyed it um i will give it a solid 8 out of 10 the reasons why i wouldn't, I wouldn't give it a 9 or 10 is because like i mentioned i think it was kind of repetitive um, other than that i think i really enjoyed it and i hope you've also enjoyed it as much as i have that it's brought you back you know 10 years ago when you first read the twilight books and you've also come to realize how far you know you've come from those books so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you enjoyed it please give it a like also leave a comment below and also please subscribe to my channel for more book related content i hope to see you guys soon bye